Hey guys, so another XSI2 Houdini tutorial. And today I'm going to talk about uh, get closest points and the, and how you do that in Houdini. So here I have this closest point and I drive the, the color by the distance. Uh, not a very exciting example maybe, but yeah, just to show show you what I mean. So anyway, so let's go to Houdini. And here I have this point scattered on this sphere with different size and different color and then I'm using a copy sop to copy spheres on them. So first of all drop down an attribute vop. Oh. And let's get in here. And I'm gonna do two things. First of all I'm gonna average out the colors based on these red ones here and I'm also gonna drive the drive the scale based on the distance. So if they are big they're not going to be affected so this big one will stay the same and then the smaller one will be bigger uh, depending how close they are to the big ones. And this is not maybe the best way of doing this it's just that I want to show you the workflow. So I'm going to do a point cloud open um, and you can see it's the same thing you have a search radius which is the cut that off distance in XSI. I'm going to put that to 2 uh, number of points, maybe do 100 and yeah like here if you look at this attribute vop you know like this is basically like get point position it runs over points, so it's the same thing or you can do run over primitives or vertices uh, but let's do it on points on this one uh, so on every point I want to do a lookup so dump, I go here and uh, what point cloud am I going to look in? I want to have the point cloud that goes into input 1 which happens to be itself but it could be another point cloud that it goes into another input. But Okay so this is the first step uh, and if you just want to average a value out like I want to do with the colors then you can just use this handy thing point cloud filter so I'm going to take plug in the handle here and then I'm going to pick up the color which is CD in Houdini and then I'm going to take this and plug it into CD here and now you can see it's really dark so it's almost like everything just got black but it's just because it's averaging out and taking too there's too much black particles and black neighbors so it affects it so I'm just going to do a multiply here multiply constant so I can drive the in intensity. So I'm going to put that to 15 and now you see it a little bit better. But anyway, so then there's another way. If you want to do something more involved and go through every neighbor and find stuff and do stuff, first of all you need to loop. So I'm going to do use a while loop uh, and I'm going to plug in the, the point cloud here Another thing I need to do though, I need to, because now you have a boolean there, which is the condition that's telling it should I loop or not, and currently it's set to zero, so I, I just need to set that first before I do anything. So I'm going to do take an integer and just set that to one, and okay, so it's looping. But then I need to loop through all the neighbors. And I do that with a point cloud iterate. So like so. Why? So PC iterate. And if it's succeeding, I'm gonna send that to the condition. So, so it's gonna send a one, like yes, success, keep going, or zero. No, quit this. But anyway, so that's the first thing. And then next thing, on every neighbor it finds, I want to query some data. So the first thing I want to know, I want to know the position of the neighbor. So I have that here. And then the second thing I want to know, I want to know the scale of that neighbor because that was what I'm going to change. So I have the, the position and the scale. Oh, I shouldn't forget to change that to float. Okay, first of all, I, need, I want to know the distance from the current point and its neighbor. So I'm going to take the current point position here, I'm going to plug it in here, 
and then I'm going to take the current neighbor like so. So now I have a distance between those. Uh, and to use it, because I want to use this to have a weighting, and I want the weighting to be between 0 and 1. So the first thing I need to do, I need to rescale rescale this value and map that to to a 0 to 1 range. So I'm going to use this with fit range. And then this, this is the same thing as rescale in ICE. So you should have no trouble understanding what I'm doing here. I want the source max in this case. I want that to be the radius because that's the cutoff, cutoff distance. So I'm just going to do I'm just going to do constant and I'm going to connect them to both of these. So I'm going to put this to 2, like so. And I'm going to plug this into the radius. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug that into source max. And also, I want as if it's really, really close, I want it to have max weighting. And if it's really far away, like this 2, uh, then I want it to be 0. And then, what can I do? Do with this. I want to take the p scale that I get from the neighbor, and then I want to. I have the weighting of this scale from this neighbor, so I'm going to multiply these two together. Multiply, and you would almost think that this would be it, but the problem is if, if I'm going to send this out to to the scale, it will actually average out and make this big one smaller and I don't want that so another thing I'm going to do I'm going to drop down and bind and bind is the same thing as get data in uh, XSI so here I can just put in and I want the p scale p scale is the attribute that drives scale in a copy swap so I'm going to plug that into here so here is p scale and I'm going to do a maximum because I'm thinking if I have this new value of this new weighted scale and I just want it to affect the scale of the, the point if it's bigger otherwise just leave it as the old thing and I have the old p scale here so I'm gonna put that into max here and then I'm gonna take the new value and put it here and then you're just gonna take the biggest of these two and now I need to be careful I can just plug this into here because this side need to max, match up with this side. So I actually need to take this point cloud handle and plug it into the middle first, even though I don't really need it to be in there. But just because both sides need to match up. And then I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to do a bind export, which, oh, bind export. Bind export, which is the same thing as set data in ICE. So I'm going to do this like this, and then I'm going to do p scale, and look at this, boom. And I can, of course, use this radius to change change how it looks. Yeah, yeah. like I said before, this is maybe not the best way of doing this particular effect, but I just thought it was a good way of showing like how you can work with point clouds. But uh, so I hope you find it useful and uh, see you next time.